good morning. I'm Irene Diez, a software engineer at Red Hat. And this is my colleague, Sarita. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. And uh, thank you for getting up early in the morning to uh, come for our presentation. And uh, today we are going to talk about uh, two onboarding options, that one with ignition and other being, uh, one being FDO and other being ignition uh, for IoT devices. So this is today's agenda. We are going to discuss what is uh, onboarding in broad terms. Then we are going to present to you what are the options that Fedora IoT has for onboarding, as well as uh, future steps and what is coming up for Fedora. So, yeah. so what is device onboarding? Um, what do we care and so on? So device onboarding happens after we make an image, uh, provision it, and then we have to give the devices all the configurations and secrets that they need in order to perform its final uh, need. Uh, during this onboarding process, we also hope to get a connection from the device to the final IoT platform. The platform is what the device needs in order to get updates and some, aware, some other uh, software and so on. This whole process, of course, needs to be uh, secure in each of the steps, and there shouldn't be a need for human intervention, so the whole process should be hands-off. So if you can imagine if we are trying to onboard a thousand devices in the middle of a mountain, an engineer cannot be bored, I mean cannot be bothered to go to the onboarding site. We simply need someone to ship the devices over there, power them on and power them on and everything else should be automatic, secure and yeah, no need for human intervention. Fedora has two different options in order to do, do this, so Sarita is going to give an overview about them. Yes, uh, so uh, let's uh, get a brief uh, introduction to these two options. Uh, what is FDO? Uh, it's uh, basically FIDO device onboarding uh, What uh, protocol. It's an open industry standard protocol developed by uh, FIDO Alliance. FIDO Alliance is uh, basically formed by a couple of uh, tech leading companies such as ARM, Intel, Google, and many to name. Uh, a little bit of history to FDO. FDO was initially known as uh, SDO, which is Secure Device Onboarding, uh, developed by Intel, and later, uh, later it was uh, contributed to FIDO Alliance to uh, become FDO with uh, enhancements. Uh, whereas Ignition is it, uh, it's a part of CoreOS uh, ecosystem, which is internally developed by uh, in-house in Red Hat and uh, maintained by a group called CoreOS Working Group. Uh, the the basic difference between the two options, uh, I think it's, the, it's in their infrastructure the, because of the distributed nature of FDO. It, is, it requires a proper complex uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, may it be a server side and the client side implementations, which we will see in details uh, later. And uh, comparatively, I would say Ignition has a simpler infrastructure, which uh, basically had, uh, revolves around one configuration file although this configuration file, uh, it can be linked to other, uh, other configuration files which, uh, which you can run at the, uh, which will be merged at the uh, runtime. So uh, yeah, that's the basic difference, but we'll see the more details as we go ahead. Yeah, so how do FDO and Ignition fit with Fedora IoT? So in order to make a Fedora IoT image, you would be using Image Builder, there have been previous talks in this conference about what is uh, Osbill Composer, Image Builder, and so on. So if you haven't seen them, I would recommend you to check the, the yeah, those other talks. So you would use a blueprint in order to make a Fedora IoT simplified installer or a raw image, then use Image Builder to produce that image, and then during, I mean, once the image has been uh, provisioned, you would uh, use either FDO or Ignition, probably both at the same time, and at first boot, uh, the devices would be onboarded, onboarded, yeah. Um, yeah, and Sarita is going to explain a little bit more about Ignis, I mean, uh, about FDO. FDO. Yes. Uh, so let's see some of the key features uh, uh, of FDO. Uh, the whole idea of FDO, it works around uh, providing maximum security during the end-to-end -end onboarding process. So, uh, of course, the first thing comes is uh, no uh, manual intervention. Uh, there comes a zero touch. Uh, where are the maximum possibilities that uh, uh, security threats can can be uh, there? 
FDO works uh, by, pro, uh, by the principle of establishing uh, a chain of trust. Uh, to explain uh, this a little bit more, I would like to go to the next slide, where uh, we have uh, the whole, uh, this is the FDO protocol, which Irene is going to tell us about in a bit, uh, about, the, uh, how, about the flow and how it works. Uh, but a few of the concepts uh, to explain uh, the chain of trust. So uh, FDO can be seen or uh, divided into two phases. One happens at the device uh, manufacturing site and the other, uh, it happens at the onboarding site. So at the, these two uh, phases, they can be in uh, different timelines. So, so there has to be security uh, in terms of uh, its ownership, which is provided at each step. The ownership of the device, it can change during the whole time, uh, a number of times. So. Uh, <clears throat> uh, okay. uh, apart from this, uh, one of the features that's uh, most spoken about FDO is late binding, which, uh, uh, which solves a lot of problems related to uh, onboarding in the industry. So uh, th what is late binding is, uh, so when the device is manufactured, the uh, device does not know that which platform it is going to get onboarded or the configuration that it is going to onboard it with. This can be decided at later stages when the device actually goes to the on-site and uh, that's when uh, there, this feature allows uh, uh, flexible, uh, flexibility in terms of device management, which is very useful. And um, yeah, that's the feature. And uh, apart from this, uh, FDO has uh, other features such as uh, uh, reliability in terms of uh, if there are a number of devices, every time FDO works, it works the same way for all the devices. Uh, and even though the protocol is pretty uh, complex for the end user, it's very simple uh, to use. Uh, even a same skilled worker uh, can power on the device at the onboarding site and doesn't need to know what happens inside. <coughs> uh, it is platform independent and uh, cost saving, I would say. Uh, I mean, the infrastructure does take, uh, is, is expensive since it's uh, complex and it has uh, hardware software requirements, uh, but it's a one-time job and uh, uh, it saves uh, a lot of uh, manual processes and uh, even uh, simplifies the errors that, are, uh, that could possibly happen when a traditional or uh, manual onboarding is uh, there. So, So now FDO in a little more of detail. As Sarita said, there are two places where the whole onboarding process happens. On the left side of this of this slide, you see the device initialization part, which happens at the manufacturing site, and then uh, we have the on-site onboarding part. So uh, during device initialization, there are two entities that are important. First of all, the device, and then the manufacturing server. Uh, the device would contact the manufacturing server in order to get a GUI ID and two different, I guess, documents would be generated. Uh, one are the device credentials, which we will be hosted in the device, and those device credentials tell the device where uh, it would find the rendezvous server later on in the process, which is on the onboarding side. The manufacturing server would get an ownership voucher. This ownership voucher is a cryptographic document. And using that document, uh, the, which is a 509X certificate, the, the FDO protocol allows, to, I mean, allows you to verify that you are the owner of the device at a, at a current point in time. So in this point in time, the, the owner of the device is the manufacturing server. Uh, the onboarding is still going on, so the device would be moved to the onboarding site, and meanwhile, the manufacturing server would, transfer, would trans transfer this ownership voucher to the owner onboarding server, so that uh, in, right now, at this point in time, the owner of the device would be the owner onboarding server. Uh, as you can see in these slides, the, the, commun the communication uh, starts uh, I mean, the device contacts the manufacturing server. That is what the arrow means, but the connections, uh, I mean, are answered and so on. So uh, the device reaches the, the final point, 
and then the owner and boarding server would transfer this, uh, owner, this ownership voucher to the rendezvous server, and in the rendezvous server, we would have a mapping from a device UID to an IP, and that IP is what the device will later on use to contact the, the owner. <laughs> so the device uh, finally reaches its final step, and it would use the device credentials in order to find where its uh, rendezvous server uh, is. So it would contact the rendezvous server, uh, the rendezvous server would check if that guy UID makes sense to him, and if so, it will tell the device where its owner is. Then the device will contact the owner, they would establish uh, a chain of trust based on the keys that the device has in its uh, device credentials and the keys that the owner has in the ownership voucher. The owner would transfer some keys to the service info API server and the device would then contact the service info API server in order to do this final onboarding steps, which is where the device would get all the configurations and keys that it needs in order to, to work. So how does it fit with the, you know, how does, I mean, how do we do this? So uh, as we said before, in order to build a Fedora IoT image, you will need a, a blueprint. In order to use FDO, you need a simplified installer blueprint. And the only thing that you need to add to this configuration, apart from any other configuration that you might need, is a customization.fdo, uh, I guess, a part where you would uh, place what is the URL to your manufacturing servers because as we said before, the only thing that the device needs is just an IP to get to the manufacturing server and everything else would be automatic from that point on. So we would use Image Builder. Um, if you're using the command line, you would run Composer CLI, Compose Start Over 3, and then the name of your blueprint, which is a TOML file. Then you would select the type of image that you need, any other uh, further parameters, since Fedora IoT, uh, is an OS3 based operating system, which means that it has an uh, immutable uh, file system. You would need a commit in order to fetch uh, the file system and so on. So you would uh, use that, and then uh, the image builder would spit a Fedora IoT simplified installer image, which is an ISO. You would uh, provision the device, uh, it would boot, and the whole process that we saw in the previous slide would happen, and the device would know what to do and so on. So, but I mean, uh, we are onboarding the device, how do I get the configuration and so on? Uh, the FDO standard has a non normative part, which are the service info modules. Each service info module is a configuration, um, I guess, uh, module, where you can put uh, some atomic instructions and it works with a key value uh, protocol. So in this slide, you can see that uh, we have a couple of configuration things. This is a YAML file. So we can, for instance, establish an initial user. As you see there, uh, I'm creating a, a user and giving it a password and some SSH keys. We can also move, I mean, copy files from the uh, service info API server to the final device. We can run some commands. Uh, we can establish uh, a disk this encryption in a given this level, and we can also specify if we want that the device wants to be rebooted after the onboarding process has happened or not. Uh, you have an URL over there where you can see which are the FSIMs that the FDO Alliance is working on. Uh, Red Hat has a couple which haven't been published there, but we are working towards making them part of the standard. And if you are interested, you can go to Fedora IoT, FIDO Environment Board uh, RS, because our implementation is in Rust, in order to contribute or find any more information. And now with Ignacio. Uh, yeah. So uh, let's see some of the uh, features that, uh, what is Ignition, what it can uh, do, and how does it work. Uh, Ignition uh, can be described as the first boot configuration tool, although it can be used for provisioning purposes. Uh, it, uh, it basically runs in the in FS at the first boot. Uh, it 
the things that you can do with uh, ignition uh, involves uh, things such as configuring users, uh, disk manipulations, which uh, you can create partitions, uh, and enabling the system D services. Uh, all of these uh, features, uh, they are supported by CoreOS, but uh, uh, Fedora IoT only supports a part of uh, Ignition, so uh, not all the uh, features uh, that you can do with uh, Fedora IoT will see uh, in details what Fedora IoT can perform to. Uh, and uh, Ignition's uh, configuration file, basically it's a JSON document uh, which, um, which can be embedded inside uh, the ISO or uh, it can be kept at a remote location where you ca it can be fetched uh, during the onboarding process. <coughs> Ignition follows a uh, declarative uh, pattern. Uh, that means Ignition knows uh, what stage it is going to be rather than uh, how to do those uh, things. So uh, for example, if it's uh, going to get some uh, disk manipulations done, uh, it knows uh, that it has to uh, partition the disk or uh, what to do. But the how to do part, it gets it uh, gets it done by the OS, underlying OS uh, tools and utilities, so uh, Ignition doesn't have to worry about how, how to do part. Uh, the, the nature of uh, Ignition, it promotes uh, immutable infrastructure, meaning that uh, the configurations uh, once provisioned or after the first boot cannot be changed. If user needs to do, uh, to do some changes in the configuration, reprovisioning has to be done. Uh, this part is a bit, a bit expensive in terms of uh, reprovisioning uh, compared to FDO if uh, after updating configurations uh, at runtime, uh, uh, new configurations can also be applied. There is no need of reprovisioning the device. Uh, also, uh, the automatic uh, con configurations are deleted once the uh, one successful uh, provisioning is done from the VM metadata, which, uh, which is useful because uh, the sensitive information is not accessible once uh, the device is provisioned. Uh, it does support HTTPS and uh, config uh, verification. That's a useful tool, too. So, uh, yeah, we'll see the next thing. So, how would you configure, uh, I mean, ignition in order for a device to be onboarded. As Sarita said, you simply need a JSON configuration file. The current version is 3.4.0. Uh, and as we said before, in Fedora IoT, we don't support all the features that Ignition has. In our case, uh, we enable file links and directories creation. We also can uh, create system D units, users and groups, as well as the other Ignition metadata configurations, such as uh, retrieving a remote uh, file and, and so on. As you see there is a JSON file and this uh, might cause a problem because as you know, JSON files are not human friendly. So in order to avoid using JSON files, you have Butane. So Butane is a source to, is a transpiler, which is a source to source compiler. Butane would take a Butane configuration file written in YAML, which is more human friendly, and then you would use the Butane transpiler in order to get the JSON configuration file. And why would we, I mean, why would we do that? Because while we are transpiling once, uh, one configuration file to another, we would get any, I mean, we would get warnings if there are any errors, and we also check uh, based on the variant that we are defining over there, I don't know if you can see it, but we are using the rel 4 variant. If the options that we are given to the butane configuration file are supported by the variant that we want. And yeah, currently the rel 4 variant is on version 1.0 one, one and we are targeting ignition 3.3.0. Yeah, so some examples. Uh, if everything goes well, you would run ignition as shown in the first example and Butane would speed a uh, JSON uh, ignition configuration file. In some, in something goes wrong, for instance, in the second example, I've forgotten to establish uh, an inst install section in the in the unit. So Butane would tell me, "Hey, you've got an error there." And if I'm using something that is not supported altogether in the bottom example, you would see that uh, Butane would simply give an error saying that, "Hey, the file system configurations are not uh, enabled." for this variant that you are using. So how would you use Butane in order to onboard a device? You have two different options. As Sarita said before, you can either copy the whole 
JSON file into a section in the image builder blueprint, but uh, instead of using JSON, you would have to transform it to base64. And then if you want to do that, you would only have the option to use, I mean, to produce a simplified installer. So you would simply call a composer CLI, choose the image type that you want, for instance, the IoT simplified installer in this case, and then you would get the image. The other options that you have is to specify, as I said before, a remote uh, URL where the ignition configuration file would be fetched at first boot. So if you choose to do that, you can either produce a simplified installer, which is an ISO, or a raw image, which is a yeah, compressed raw image. In the case of uh, the raw image, you would run the command that is there, and then you would have the, the image. In both cases, you would have to provision the device, and then at first boot, uh, yeah, ignition would work, and the device would get onboarded. So after seeing FDO and Ignition, you must be wondering uh, which one to go for, which is the uh, option. But to be honest, it's not the one-to-one -one comparison. It's rather two options uh, that you can uh, choose based on uh, the project requirements, uh, what security features are uh, to be uh, used in the, uh, uh, in the pro project, and of course the infrastructure. Uh, yeah, based on the differences between the two options. So uh, it's up to uh, the requirements of the project. And uh, yes, uh, the combination of the both can also be used um, uh, together. Uh, for example, some of, the, uh, uh, some of the features or some of the things that you can do with FDO and Ignition or you can create the user part or disk manipulation or others that can be kept for Ignition and the rest of the protocol stays with uh, FDO. Um, and uh, so, uh, Uh, some of the future enhan uh, enhancements that uh, that are coming with FDO, uh, one of them being the service info per device feature. Uh, so uh, was this uh, Irina earlier uh, uh, explained about the uh, the service info modules that we have for FDO. Uh, currently, uh, what happens is all the devices get uh, onboarded with the same configuration file. That's we call it the base of the default configuration. But uh, uh, with this feature, uh, it will be possible for the user to uh, onboard different uh, devices with uh, different uh, settings uh, if they want uh, service spec uh, device specific uh, configuration. For example, uh, for SSH key, uh, uh, we have started with that and uh, if, the, uh, if the user is not, uh, d doesn't want the device specific one, it still has the option to get onboarded with the default ones. Uh, another thing is that we are trying to move to database storage. Currently what we have is all the files, uh, configuration file, uh, which is ownership vouchers and uh, 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 the other configuration files are being stored uh, at the file system, which is really not feasible uh, when uh, con considering a number of devices. Uh, so uh, database uh, will be a good option. We are working on that. Uh, one of the options, uh, uh, things that we are trying to do is moving from uh, warp to axum. Warp is a web framework that we use in FDO, uh, but uh, it does not uh, comply to uh, FIPS. FIPS is basically a cryptographic uh, standard uh, that we use, and uh, Warp internally uses Rust TLS, which uses ring. Uh, that ring crate does not uh, comply with FIPS, so we are moving to uh, axum. That's uh, it. And, uh, yeah, and we are missing a bit on the left side of the slides, but forget yeah. us, uh, this is related to the future of Ignition. So Ignition is developed by the Coreos team. As you, you saw, we don't uh, support everything that Ignition does. So we are working towards uh, enabling a file system uh, customizations after, I mean, during the onboarding process, because right now you would do that in the image building process. And we have a static partition table, so you cannot change that unless you change the code in OS Build Composer. So yeah, all, you, all that you have been seeing right now, it will be coming uh, for Fedora 38 as soon as we get back from this conference. That is the, the soonest part. Um, yeah, but it would definitely be for Fedora 39. And yeah, that's all. And we'll have to take your questions now if you want. And thank you, yeah. everyone, for listening. That's
Council. Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. They so we've been asked where can we get uh, those uh, documentation or information. So ah, where? So. But I think that he's asking where would I configure this? Am I right? Ah, okay. We do have our documentation in the link that I show you in the next slide. There is a file which is called the how to. You have examples over there in order to know how to configure this. And if you are interested in how the protocol works for our specific FBO FSIMs because some of them are not part of the standard. Uh, under the same repo, there is a docs uh, folder where you have docs FSIMs and you have the specification over there. If you are looking for the FSIMs that are going to be part of the standard, which are the ones about the file copying, the commands, and some other one that I'm forgetting about, those things are in the FIDO Alliance FSIM uh, repo in GitHub. Does that answer? Yeah. So you're saying, does each implementation decide which FSIM is Yes, yes. Each FSIM has a set of configuration things that you need to, to configure. It's not the same to create a new user to, you know, create a file. So for users, you have, uh, can I set a password? Can I set a SH key? Whereas with files, you have uh, the options to set permissions. And yeah, that is the difference. Each FSIM has its own configuration parameters and so on. Yeah. OK. OK, thank you. OK, another one. <laughs> So we've been asked whether we... For ignition. Yeah, so... Let me... Let me check if I... Understood. You are asking whether we have thought about signing the ignition configuration file so that we know that the device would get the configuration file that it needs. We haven't thought about it to the best of my knowledge. Yeah. So we'll or take up that with the team and with the choreos. We'll come back uh, to you. Uh, yeah. And yeah. we'll tell you when we have the opportunity. Are we good? Okay. Thank you. <laughs>